Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu akbar. Allahu الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة 
wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa taku allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal awaham inna allaha kana alaykum wakiba fa inna asdaqa alhadithi kitabu allah wa khayru alhadi hadi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umur muhdathatuha wa kullu muhdathatin bid'a wa kullu bid'atin dolala wa kullu dolalatin finnaa I'm a bad. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the topic for our khutbah today is inshallah about brotherhood. If you were to open the dictionary and look up the meaning of brotherhood, it'll describe it as the bond between brothers or even sisters, the bond that comes with a family ties, so the tie of blood, or that which exists between members of a community with a common interest, so say a social club or professional, act a professional association, for example. Islam redefined brotherhood in a new and profound manner by changing the relationship from one based on personal interest or mutual activity to a permanent bond based on belief and acceptance of Islam. As Allah tells us in the Quran in Surah al hujra verse 10, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَسْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ The believers are nothing else than brothers. So make reconciliation between your brothers and fear Allah that you may receive mercy. Our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to us about brotherhood in a famous hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يهب لأخي ما يهب لنفسي. None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. As Muslims, our purpose on this earth is to submit to the will of Allah, follow His commands, abstain from His prohibitions, in an effort to gain His mercy and inshallah inherit paradise. Our deen fosters brotherhood amongst us and emphasizes the benefits of brotherhood to us individually and collectively as the Muslim Ummah. For example, during Salah in the Tashahud we say, As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. May peace be upon us and upon all the righteous servants of Allah. Every Muslim that prays constantly makes this dua for themselves and the Ummah. At least, nine times a day. Now when you multiply that by the estimated 1.7 billion Muslims, you realize how lucky we are to have so many people constantly praying for us while we do the same for them. How do you love for your brother that which you love for yourself? To summarize this, I'm reminded of the hadith by Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he said, Hakku Muslim ala Muslim situn. The right of a Muslim upon another is six. The first one, when he meets him, he should greet him. So as Muslims, when we meet one another, we should say salam. We should spread peace, which is another form of dua. The second one, when he invites him, he should honor the invitation. If your Muslim brother or sister invites you, you should honor him by attending. When he asks for advice, he should give him good advice. So if we sought out for our advice by our Muslim brothers and sisters, we should try our level best to try and give them good advice according to Islam and that which will benefit them. When you're next to a brother Muslim or sister and they sneeze and praise, and praise Allah, when they say Alhamdulillah, you should wish them mercy by saying Ya Alhamdulillah. When a Muslim brother or sister is ill, we should visit them. And when they die, we should accompany their body to the burial ground. It is clear from the above hadith that in Islam, brotherhood is not merely a word we mention to each other when we meet casually or when we engage in business transactions. Rather, it is an obligation and a deep sense of responsibility and caring for the well-being of our brothers and sisters, not only in our local communities, but around the world as well. Upon completion of the hijrah, and building the masjid in Medina, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
proceeded to establish one of the main pillars of an Islamic community, brotherhood. He paired up the Muhajirin and the Ansar, who were virtual strangers to each other prior to this. The two groups understood and accepted the responsibilities that came with this pairing of brotherhood, which led to unique acts such as sharing wealth and other brotherly deeds, which helped ease the difficulties facing the Muhajirin who left everything behind in Mecca. This action had brought about a profound transformation in perception of what brotherhood means between members of the Muslim community. It redefined the concept of brotherhood beyond the typical understanding of blood or tribal relationships. The brotherhood established after Hijra came with the explicit and implicit responsibilities between Muslims as individuals and as members of the Islamic State. It was the responsibility of the strong to help the weak, of the rich to help the poor, and of the knowledgeable to help those seeking knowledge. Furthermore, it was the responsibility of brotherhood to enjoy the good and forbid the evil. We should always keep these actions of the Sahaba at the forefront of our minds, since they are the practical interpretation of brotherhood as defined by Islam. <coughs> the evidences regarding the obligation of brotherhood in the Quran, the Sunnah, and the life of the Sahaba are strikingly clear. We must be extremely vigilant in correctly upholding this concept to prevent transforming the relationship into a shallow bond, lacking the true essence of Islamic brotherhood. Sadly, one of the issues facing Muslims in the West is life in the fast lane. Everyone's busy engaging their day-to-day -day activities with their families, etc. And due to this busy lifestyle, we tend to rush our dealings with one another. We should, for example, try to take a few minutes after Juma Salah and greet our brothers next to us with Salam, introduce ourselves. We should neither be shy nor be afraid of a cold response, keeping in mind that we are only seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reported to have said, you will not enter paradise until you believe and you will not believe until you love one another. He, Rasul, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued to say, Shall I show you something which if you, carry out with, which if you carry out, you will love one another? And he replied, he, he taught the Sahabas, he said to them, spread Salam amongst yourselves. So when we meet each other, we should um, say Salaamu Alaikum to each other. And as we all know, when someone says Salaamu Alaikum to you, you return in a manner exactly or that which is better. It is necessary to let our brothers know that we care for their well-being, that we sincerely love them as we do our own blood brothers, and that we are ready to help them in any way we are able to. It has been narrated by Al-Bukhari that the Prophet ﷺ said, If one of you loves his brother for Allah's sake, then let him know since it causes familiarity to endure and family establishes love. Muslims have the responsibility to give sincere advice to their fellow brothers and sisters, to abstain from haram and stay on the course of halal in every aspect of life, following the basic rule of verifying every action with the hukum of sharia, whether in our ibadah or other um, dealings. The Prophet ﷺ said, Each of you is the mirror of his brother, so if he sees a fault in him, he should wipe it away from him. So if we see something that's wrong with someone else, it is our duty to call them, you know, have a conversation with them, a quiet word in private, without embarrassing them, and do it with, uh, with love and respect. Advise them. Brotherhood in Islam imposes a great responsibility on us to protect our brothers and sisters from harm, even from their own selves. We should ensure that we do not allow ourselves or others around us to engage in activities that could affect the unity of the Muslim Ummah. One such activity is backbiting. We must refrain from initiating or participating in it 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al Hujrat, O oh, you who believe, avoid much suspicion. Indeed, some suspicions are sins, and spy not, neither backbite one another. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate it and fear Allah. Verily, Allah is the one who forgives and accepts repentance, and He is the most merciful. Envy and, uh, envy and jealousy are also forbidden, which are the common causes of problems amongst brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ said, Do not have malice against the Muslim, do not be envious of other Muslims, do not go against the Muslim and forsake him. O the slave of Allah, be like brothers with each other. It is not allowed for a Muslim to desert his brother for over three days. Akulu kauli hada wa stawfiru Allah li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin fa stawfiruhu innahu wa furu rahim. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. As Muslims, a brotherhood must not be restricted to a geographical location alone. It should extend to Muslims all over the globe. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم described the Ummah as one body. He says. In the hadith which translates, the believers in their mutual love, mercy and compassion are like one body. If one organ complained, the rest of the body develops a fever. The media outlets and internet have no shortage of news, revealing the turmoil that Muslims are living in around the world. From occupation of Muslim lands, to the dire poverty of our brothers and sisters. This is where a sense of brotherhood becomes the vital connection between Muslims around the globe. It is our obligation to be politically and intellectually aware of all affairs impacting Muslims around the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described the believer as a brother to one, to one another and therefore it should pain us, it should hurt us just as it would if it were our own broad, blood brother when we read about the plight of our fellow Muslims in Burma, Palestine, Syria, Iraq and all the other lands in the world where we hear these atrocities going on. As Muslims, we must always gravitate toward the concept of brotherhood and the obligation of helping and sympathizing with our brothers and sisters in Islam, regardless of where they are or what their condition is. Although helping our brothers and sisters may not be physically possible in all circumstances, it is imperative to always care and be concerned for their, um, for their affairs, regardless of geography or language, and do whatever is possible within the circumstances. As a minimum, the least we should do is make dua for them, and if possible, speak up for them, e either via demonstrations and assist with donations if they're raising money. So, Ramadan's coming, that's another time we are reminded to be generous. We still have our brothers and sisters all over the world going through hard times. They've lost everything they have, um, families, um, sustenance. It is a good time to increase our efforts in supporting them in any way that we can. It is imperative to care or even train ourselves to care for Muslims in nearby or remote parts of the world by reminding ourselves that our bond with all Muslims is that of brothers and sisters. We should obey the command of Prophet Muhammad wasalam, when he said to us, if you see injustice, you must stop it with your limbs, if not, stop it with your voice, and if you can't, then hate the act of injustice that's going on. But remember that hating the act of um, injustice, that's the weakest form of faith. So we should try the first two, if not, then we can resolve to the third. Preserving our Muslim identity is both an obligation and a challenge at the same time. It is paramount for Muslims everywhere to remain aware of the concept of brotherhood as a most critical tool in striving to keep a distinct identity, especially in the West, 
Therefore, it is an obligation to follow the lead of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions in this manner, and do whatever is necessary to maintain it. To close this khutbah, my advice to myself and all of us is for us to all strive to maintain our brotherhood and fulfill our obligations upon each other. If we know a Muslim who may not be practicing their deen as much at present, let's make dua for them. And when we have to correct someone's mistake, let's do so in confidence. And if we've been corrected as well, let's accept that with humility and have an open conversation and respect each other. With Ramadan approaching, let's not discourage our brothers and sisters by labeling them Ramadan Muslims. Instead, we must encourage them, keep them in a close circle, and continue to pray that Allah guides us all and cause us to die on the straight path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the same brotherhood that he blessed the Sahabas with. <coughs> to conclude the khutbah, I wish to remind us of us all of Allah's command in Surah Al-Imran, where he says, and hold fast, all of you together, to the rope of Allah, and be not divided among yourselves. <coughs> and remember Allah's favor on you. For you were enemies one to another, but he joined your hearts together, so that by his grace you became brethren, and you were on the brink of a pit of fire, and he saved you from it. Thus Allah makes his ayah clear to you that you may be guided. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'mu'u bila adli wal ihsan, وإتاء ذي القوبة وينهى عن الفعشاء والمنكر والبغي يأذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا على أذيم يذكركم واشكروه يذكركم واستغفروا يغفر لكم وتقوه يجعل لكم من أمركم مخرجا أكيم الصلاة